Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Presidential Address, the greatest piece of information you'll ever hear in your life. If you are devoutly religious, this show better than the Bible. If you are into WWE, this show better than The Rock. This is just winning central. Last week's record, six and five across the board, taking our all-time record this season to 117 wins, 94 losses. I am personally impressed with that. Patted myself on the back, but that is nothing. Our best bet record, are you kidding me? Two and one last week as well. One losing week this entire season. If you stay till the end of this show, you'll get the best bets. Three of them, our record, 29 and 15. That's 29 wins, 15 losses, 66%. You know what I have to say about that? You ready? Here. Booyah! Okay. And... Our teaser record, eight and two. Double bicep pump. Okay, guys, we're going right down the board, top to bottom. We got Andy Lang joining us as well later on in the show for three prop bets. Uh, We had another winning week for our clients. One hour, 5% play on the Indianapolis Colts went four and two. I'm not even going to pose for that. I'm just going to sit here and say, You're the man, Prez. Okay. The narcissism is over for a moment. Let's get into it. San Francisco, minus three and a half playing Tennessee, a total of 44 and a half. And man, this is a strange game to handicap. Uh, Tennessee could be really, really good. And then one minute later, really, really bad. They turned the ball over four times last week against Pittsburgh and literally gave the game away oh my god i mean Tannehill, he's done nothing nothing in three games here's his yards in three games 117 yards that's literally like one goal to goal drive 161 yards that's two goal to goal drives 20 to 20 drives and a whooping 87 yard game in the air Three games ago. Uh, A.J. Brown looks like he's going to be playing. I mean, I'm not starting with Tannehill. He's missing everybody. King Henry opens up the passing game. Uh, He hasn't had Julio. He hasn't had A.J. Um, And the team defensively is playing really, really well. Uh, Meanwhile, the 49ers, they're playing great right now and firmly in position to make the playoffs. Their offensive balance is amazing. Uh, 162 yards on the ground, 235 in the air. Uh, That was last week, and it's been pretty consistent over the last four or five games. Uh, Defensively, both teams are good. Both teams are in the top 10 in yards allowed, uh, but they're in the middle of the pack in points allowed. So I'm not saying they're great, but they are good. So what do we do in this game? The total is out of the question here. Can't play an over with Tennessee. Don't really want to play an under right now that low with San Francisco. Uh, My pick on this game, I'm going with the dog here, guys. Uh, I'm getting three plus a hook at home with a playoff team uh, and getting back A.J. Brown and coming off of a loss uh, and a loss that really should not have been a loss. It was one of those, and we've spoken about this in the past, One of those games where they really were the better team. They lost because of turnovers. This is a great spot to play Tennessee. Take them plus the three and a half. Cleveland and Green Bay. Not touching this game, guys. A lot of money has been coming in on Cleveland. The line was out at seven and a half. It's now seven. I don't know who the hell is going to play for the Browns. Uh, There's just too many other games to play. Let's just uh, skip this one and move on. Indianapolis. Well, when I wrote this up uh, and I did my research, they were plus one and a half. Now it's a pick em. Last week, I had Indy as my 5% play against the Patriots, and I really, really love this Indianapolis team. I've been telling you guys all year, they're one of the best teams in football. They can literally win it all. I think Indianapolis has a better chance 
of winning the Super Bowl than Arizona does. Uh, Arizona's in trouble, guys. You cannot go to Detroit and get blown out. You just can't. It's literally not allowed. Think about going to a strip joint for the food. Just something you don't do. That is how wrong getting blown out by Detroit is. Arizona has lost two games in a row. And remember, guys, last year, same time, same bat time, same bat channel, this Arizona team fell apart. With all that said, this is a bad spot for Indy. Uh, they're playing a team uh, that just must win this game. Uh, they're playing a team that is in another conference uh, on the road. It's just not a good spot for the Colts. Uh, it is a great spot for Arizona here. They were humiliated last week. They fell apart last year. They have to be talking in the dressing room that they cannot let what last year happen again this year. They're coming home. Uh, bad spot for Indy, good spot for Arizona. So what do we do here? Guys, I just can't play Arizona right now. Uh, and I really want to play on Indianapolis. I want to play on Indianapolis in every game. My pick in this game is a slight lean on the Colts. It's hard to play a total here, though. I want to play over, but man, Indianapolis is running the ball almost every play. While Arizona, they've only scored 23 points or more once in their last four games. I'm going to skip the total and I have a small lean on Arizona. <clears throat> oh. Next up, Tampa Bay. Minus 11 and a half versus the Carolina Panthers. A total of 44. It was 45. We're seeing this being bent down. It came out at 48 and a half. So there's a shit ton of money coming in on the under. Uh, I, I would not want to play the Bucs this week. If I'm any team in the league, I'm like, why this week? What a disaster game for them last week. They came, they were shut out. Nine nothing loss. I mean, obviously their defense played outstanding, but their offense just couldn't find any rhythm. They're going to come into this game mad as hell, angry as hell, looking to lay the smackdown on the Panthers, but can they? Godwin is out, Fournette is out, Evans is out, half their team is out. Who the hell knows what we're going to get? But one thing we do know is we're going to get a real shitty Panthers team. And this Panthers team cannot score. Uh, my pick in this game is the under. Uh, I cannot play Tampa Bay minus that many points with all those injuries. Carolina doesn't deserve my money. And I just don't think Carolina is going to be able to score many points on this Tampa Bay team. I think the game is going to be a slow moving game. Take under the total. Next up, we have the New York Giants in Philadelphia, and I'm just going to say right off the bat, I do not have a pick on this game, and I'm not going to bet this game. However, something in my gut is telling me that the New York Giants are going to win this game outright. I have no reason to believe that. If I was so convinced that they would win this game outright, I would take them plus 10, but I'm not. I'm laying off this game completely. However, it just... It's one of those hilarities in sport. Philadelphia playing for their playoff lives, just beat Washington, have Washington up next in firm control. They get to play Dallas when Dallas is likely going to rest all their starters. They have a path to the playoffs. Strangely, they screwed up all this weekend. I don't know why. I have no reason. It's just one of those insane things that happen in sports. With that said, it's a pass for me because with wh wh whatever I just said, that's just some stupid gut feel where, honestly, Philly is likely going to win this game and probably blow them out. Anyway, Chargers was 10 and a half. Now we've got a nine on the board. They're playing Houston. A total was 47 and a half. It's been bet down to 45 and a half. This is a great spot for the Chargers. I do not normally want to lay minus nine and a half, minus 10 on the road, especially uh, in, in a uh, division game, in a conference game. But man, there's no other way to bet this game. It's Chargers or nothing. The Chargers could have and should have beaten the Chiefs last week. 
They're playing great on both sides of the ball. This game is a total mismatch. Who cares that Houston beat the Jags? This Houston team is brutal. The Jags are brutal. Houston won because of special teams. That's not something that you can continuously count on. This game is total blowout written all over it. Listen to this, guys. Houston might not put up 13 points. The last game against the Jags, they put up 30. Before that, check out the Houston scores. 13, 0, 14, 22, 9, 22, 5, and 3. Yes, three games in their last seven were under five points. Under five points. How many points do you think they're going to put on this Charger team that do have a good defense? Uh, I think the Chargers put up at least 28. 28 to 35 for sure. I wouldn't even be blown away if they get to 41. Houston, 17 at best. This is a blowout. Take the Chargers, please. Minus the nine and a half. Now we move on to Detroit against Atlanta. Man, this line has been moving around all day. Uh, it started at six, went down to four and a half. Now it's at five and a half for Atlanta. The total in this game is 43, and I'll make this easy. I am not touching the side here. I have sworn off betting on or against the Falcons. They are unbettable. But I do like the under. Both teams have been playing to the under all year. Let's look at the offense. Falcons just scored 13 points. Before that, 29, 17, 21, 0, and 3 in their last six games. Two of their last six games was under three points. Three of their last six games under 13 points. While the Lions, well, they just put up 30, then 10, 29, 14, 10, 16, 6, 19, 11, 17. That's their last 10 games. Two games in their last 10 went over 17 points. These offensive numbers are brutal. Both teams in the bottom eight in the league offensively. Now, normally, nor and this is important, especially at the end of the year where teams don't have much to play for. And I mean, I, I know Atlanta still has stuff to play for, but they're, they're not going anywhere. Normally, when you take these shitty offensive teams, you put them together in week 16 or 17, they normally go over the total. But this game, I can't see it happen. There's just no firepower on either of these teams. Neither of these teams can stretch the field. And both of these teams play that short putts around game where they're either running the ball or throwing screen passes or that terrible out, direct out to the wide receiver who's standing five yards behind the line of scrimmage. I never ever could understand that play uh anyway i would be i would not be surprised if this game was 17 13 and that's still two touchdowns almost to spare take under the total in detroit and atlanta now we move to baltimore and cincinnati ah well baltimore played great last week i mean you know how against baltimore i am uh but last week they didn't have that really bad quarterback named lamar jackson they had a superstar in the making named Huntley. Okay, maybe a little hyperbole there, but frankly, I would fade them every day of the week if Lamar's playing, and I'm more likely to play on them with Huntley in. Since the earlier this year went into Baltimore, and I mean the Camel Clutch, baby, that's what they laid on them. They won 41-17. Now, I don't expect a similar beatdown, but since he is moving in the right direction and the Ravens are moving in the wrong direction, how much confidence does Harbaugh have that he has to go for broke twice in the last three games? They went for the two-pointer at the end of the game to win it all. Are you kidding? Take the field goal and say, we're better than you. We'll stop you and we'll score a field goal to win in overtime. Nope. Instead, he tells his defense, you can't stop the other team, so we're going to try and end it here. That cannot be good for the dressing room. Uh, and they've lost, Baltimore has lost their last three games in a row by combined 
four points. Uh, what is my pick on this game? I think this game's going to be close, guys. I lean on the under, and I like Cincinnati on the money line if it remains under two and a half. But I do like the under 45 in this game as well. Our Rams versus Minnesota. Man, I've been telling you guys all year, I am so high on the Rams. I mean, if the Rams were a blunt, I wouldn't be doing this show right now. With that said, I think Minnesota is a way better football team than most people think. Uh, this Minnesota team, and I tell you this every week, they could beat any team, anytime, anywhere. They just can't seem to get out of their own way. Well, they were able to get out of their own way against Chicago. Now they're at home, minus plus three, 49 on tap. I think this is a brutal spot for the Rams. Uh, I like Minnesota in this game at plus the three points. And guys, I like the over as well in this game. So there's two plays for you on this game. I think we're going to see it's indoors. You know, Matt Stafford. Okay, they didn't put up a ton against Seattle, but Matt Stafford, I think he's second in the league with touchdown passes. They can certainly stretch the field. Um, and Minnesota, I don't care what defense they go up against. This team can score. I like over the total, and I like Minnesota. Um, as for Jacksonville and the Jets, well, I want to take the Jets here, so I'm going to. I think Jacksonville is in a situation now where they might as well just lose every game and get the first round draft pick. Uh, I'm not going to personally bet this game, but my play for you guys is take the Jets. I, I, Jacksonville's brutal. Now we go to Buffalo and New England. I played Buffalo as a 5% play two weeks ago against the Patriots and they lost. Everyone hailed Bill Belichick as a genius. Well, they've all hailed him as a genius for the last 20 years. But in this game particular, they were like, oh, my God, what incredible planning by Bill. Man, they ran the ball 7,000 times. They, you know, it was just amazing. Really? Okay, guys, they went for two on their only touchdown. Only touchdown. So it's not like they were some fucking offensive juggernaut. I swore there, but whatever. Uh, had they not have gotten two, the Bills would have had two chances to tie the game and take it into overtime. Instead, they had the, the Bills had to go for it. And really, the Bills shot themselves in the foot. The Bills were moving the ball up and down the field. They were in the red zone many times that game. They just couldn't, they just couldn't, uh, they couldn't pull it off. Could, the words escape me. These two teams were nine yards apart in offense. Nine yards. The Bills were able to move the ball, as I said. They had 100 chances to win that game. So what do I like in this matchup? The Bills, again. And I think they win this game outright. Uh, this game is for the division. What a game it's going to be. Home field advantage on the line. It should be a doozy. So long as the wind is not 60 miles an hour, my pick in this game is Buffalo. Now we got Chicago going into Seattle. Minus six and a half. It was minus seven after Seattle's terrible performance last night. Uh, it is now six and a half, and that sets up a beautiful bet for us. Uh, I will play against Chicago every day, all day, and especially against teams that are struggling. Uh, Seattle is going to whoop the Chicago team. I'm telling you guys right now, Justin Fields is not some future star. He's just not. Like, Chicago needs to consider drafting a quarterback as far as I'm concerned. They also have to get rid of that coach. This Chicago team is brutal. They can't move the ball at all. Uh, and we have seen, look, Seattle did nothing against the Rams, but the two games before that, they put up over 30 points. I think this game has got, like, 35 to 10 written all over it. Take the Seahawks minus the six and a half. Now we move to Pittsburgh and Kansas City. I'll make this easy, guys. I think Pittsburgh sucks. I've been saying it all year. Here's the bottom line. When your arm is dead and it's rebelling against you, how do you fix it? Well, you warm it up. That's what you do. When I go to the gym to work on these pythons right here, 
I do a warm up. When I ride the Peloton, I do a warm up. When Big Ben needs to go out there and play, he has to warm up. And that's what the first half is for for Pittsburgh. This Pittsburgh team, and I, I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure they've been shot out four games in a row in the first half. They they literally just give the first half away so that Big Ben can warm his arm up and then they make a comeback in the fourth quarter. That's how this has been played out for four games now. So what is my bet? Kansas City in the first half. No reason to take Kansas City minus 10 in this game. Now it's minus eight. No reason to take a total in this game. Just take Kansas City minus the five in the first half. Call it a day. They're going to score and Pittsburgh, well, Big Ben's going to be warming up his arm. So there's my bet for your Kansas City-Pittsburgh matchup. Now we go to Denver versus Las Vegas. Really strong win by the Raiders against the Browns on Monday. Now, I get it, man. They really struggled to score. It, It wasn't a strong win because they played well. They didn't. It wasn't a strong win because they put up 40 points. They didn't. They played against a depleted Cleveland team. I get it. They didn't look very good. I know. But when you're winning the game from start to finish, and then Cleveland goes up by one with a couple of minutes left in the game, and you drive the ball down the field and score a winning field goal, that shows moxie. That shows desire. That shows the will to win. And we did see that from Vegas. Denver, however, total opposite. This this team could do nothing last week. I was on the under in this game, and literally nothing happened. I rode the Peloton for one hour during this game because this game was so damn boring. Denver is 3-11 and to the under this season. Bridgewater is questionable for Sunday. Does that matter? I don't really know. I don't think so. I don't care. Denver is a really good defense. Their offense is brutal. Denver's the third best team in points allowed, while the Raiders are the third worst. Denver is the fourth best team in yards allowed, while the Raiders, I think they're the 18th worst. So here we have a Raiders team that is struggling to score, a Denver team that can't score, and one of the two defenses that are just lights out. On top of that, the Raiders' weak area right now is on D, and I don't think Denver can take advantage of that. What is my pick in this game? Under the total. I mean, this game is 20-13 to 13 written all over it. That's 33. The line is 41 and a half. That still gives us a touchdown to spare. Take the under. Washington going into Dallas. Guys, this is an outright pass for me. Uh, I don't. Uh, you know, I tell you guys all the time, these these uh, NFC East games, I like to take the dog. Uh, I fear Washington right now. I fear playing on Washington right now because this team is just riddled with injuries. I mean, everybody is out. Uh, and Dallas just doesn't have any reason to blow this team out. I- I'm just going to pass. Uh, Miami and New Orleans. Sorry, guys. I'm not touching this game either. Miami is rolling and the Saints are playing great defensively. Uh, if I had to make a bet on this game, I'd take the under, but it's on prime time. The number is super low at 38 and a half. And this game, you know, this game might be one of those games where they just get to 2020 uh, and then we see what happens. I- I'm just going to lay off this completely. That's really it. Top to bottom. Thank you guys so much. We have still a lot more to come. Andy Lang up now. And when he's done, I'll give you my best bets and teasers. Welcome, everybody. We're going to do three props in three minutes. And as you've noticed, uh, it's an interesting time to be doing player props these days. Uh, But they're fun and they're profitable. I think we can get some real results uh, from some of these uh, roster movements. So let's get right into it. First prop, I'm going to take Jalen Waddell over five and a half receptions. He is back after sitting out last week. He's been a receptions and target machine when Tua is in the game. Uh, four out of the last five games that Waddle has played, he's had eight or more receptions playing the Saints, who are a really, really good run defense. So if the Miami Dolphins want to move the ball, it's probably going to be through the passing game, and Waddle's going to be a big part of that. A lot of short passes, which is great 
for over reception. So I'll take Jalen Waddle over five and a half receptions. I'm also going to take Kyler Murray over 34 and a half pass attempts. We saw the last two weeks in games that they lost, he had 49 and 41 pass attempts. And when we see games that uh, they're easily winning, he goes way under this because they depend on the run game. It's going to be a tough game against the Colts, and the Colts' rush defense has been improving. They're forcing turnovers. I think they can stop the Arizona Cardinals' rushing attack, which is going to be a lot more pass attempts for Kyler Murray. And if the Colts get up, we're going to get even more. So we could get over this 40 total. But for now, I'll take him over 34 and a half pass attempts. Next and final, we're going to go with Josh Allen over 31 and a half rushing yards. So I expected him to go under last week because he came out of that Tampa Bay game with a hurt foot. And against Carolina, there was no reason for him to have to run a lot. He had one long run for 26 yards. That was it. This game is different. This is against New England. They need to have this one. And last game against New England was a real windy game. He had six rushing attempts for 39 yards. They're not going to be conservative here. If he has the chance to run, he's going to do it. To be honest, that was their best weapon against New England was when Josh Allen got out in the open and ran a lot. I think we're going to get a soft number here because he only got credited with 24 rushing yards last week. I think that was them protecting the foot. They're not going to protect it this week. They need the win. So take Allen to get over 31 and a half rushing yards. Quick recap, Jalen Waddell over five and a half receptions. Kyler Murray over 34 and a half pass attempts. And Josh Allen over 31 and a half rushing yards. Those are your three props in three minutes. Back to you, Prez. Awesome stuff, Andy Lang. Uh, guys, uh, time for our best bets and teasers. I just really want to go through the records again. Uh, my best bet record on the show, I give out three a week, is 29 and 15. That's 66%. That is absolutely ludicrous. My teasers are eight and two of the year on the year. That one is easy. That's 80%. I'm like a mathematician. Um I know you're all thinking, yeah, Prez, you really weren't that funny this show. You know, it wasn't that entertaining, not a lot of jokes, very little sexual references, really didn't get much into the WWE. I get it all. But there really was a joke. You know what the joke was? The joke was on all the people who don't listen to the NFL presidential address. Because those records are, I'm literally standing on the tallest building in the world dropping $100 bills onto the ground. So anyone who is not below that building catching my $100 bills, well, the joke is on them. Best bets, Atlanta under the total of 43, Seattle minus six and a half, and hold the nose, the New York Jets at a pick. Two team six point teaser, Green Bay minus one, Seattle minus half, so a pick. And that's it. I'm the Prez. What a show. Guys, I, I am so appreciative of all the comments you put up. I swear to you, I read every single one of them. I love the negative stuff. I love the positive stuff. I, I really, really am appreciate, appreciative of it. Let's get over 10,000 views this week. We'll see you all on Wager Talk today, every day, noon Eastern with Teddy Covers and myself. Other than that, let's have an incredible weekend. Happy holidays to all of you guys. Merry Christmas. Uh, be well, be loved, be happy, and take care of yourselves.